why Muslim women wear the veil. Verses and a hadith about hijab in Islam. In recent years, a small piece of cloth has managed to cause quite a stir. The scarf or hijab that Muslim women wear on their heads is making headlines around the world. Hijab is banned in French public schools and other European countries have adopted or are drafting similar legislation. In Australia, a radio presenter triggered both debate and outrage when he called for the face veil, niqab, to be banned from banks and post offices. Even predominantly Muslim countries such as Turkey and Tunisia ban the hijab in certain government buildings. When a small piece of fabric causes such controversy and conflict, wouldn't it be easier to remove it? Why then, under such circumstances, do Muslim women wear scarves? There are a myriad of reasons why, but the easy, one-sentence answer is, because they believe God has made it an obligation for believing women. In the Quran God tells the believing men and women to lower their gaze and to dress modestly. He, God, specifically addresses women when he asks them not to show off their adornment, except that which is apparent, and draw their veils over their bodies. Quran 24 30-31 these verses of Quran are known as the verses of hijab and it is the consensus of Islamic scholars that they make the wearing of hijab mandatory. Some countries, such as Saudi Arabia and Qatar do enforce a dress code. Women there are expected to cover their hair and wear some sort of loose-fitting, full-length garment over their clothes. However, for the majority of Muslim women around the world, to cover, or not to cover, is a freely made choice. God requires Muslim women to dress modestly and to wear the hijab in public and in the presence of men who are not close relatives. Although the English word scarf and the Arabic term hijab have become interchangeable, it is worth noting that hijab is more than just a scarf. It is a term that covers a variety of clothing including scarves, but also a variety of different dress styles from around the world. Many have cultural connotations such as the Pakistani shawar kameez or the Afghani burqa, but whenever a Muslim woman covers her adornment, she is said to be wearing a hijab. The literal meaning of hijab is to veil, to cover, or to screen. Islam is known as a religion concerned with community cohesion and moral boundaries, and therefore hijab is a way of ensuring that the moral boundaries between unrelated men and women are respected. In this sense, the term hijab encompasses more than a scarf and more than a dress code. It is a term that denotes modest dressing and modest behavior. For instance, if a Muslim woman was wearing a scarf but at the same time using bad language, she would not be fulfilling the requirements of hijab. The majority of Muslim women wear hijab, to obey God, and to be known as respectable women. Quran 33:59. However, in the last 30 years hijab has emerged as a sign of Islamic consciousness. Many women see wearing the hijab as indicative of their desire to be part of an Islamic revival, especially in countries where the practice of Islam is discouraged or even forbidden. While those who seek to ban hijab refer to it as a symbol of gender-based repression, the women who choose to don a scarf, or to wear hijab, in the broadest sense of the word, do so by making personal decisions and independent choices. They view it as a right and not a burden. Nor do these women regard hijab as a sign of oppression. Women who wear hijab often describe themselves as being set free from society's unrealistic fashion culture. Hijab frees women from being thought of as sexual objects of desire or from being valued for their looks, or body shape rather than their minds and intellect. No longer slaves to consumerism, hijab liberates women from the need to conform to unrealistic stereotypes and images dictated by the media. Women wearing hijab have expressed that dressing modestly and covering their hair, minimizes sexual harassment in the workplace. The aura of privacy created by hijab is indicative of the great value Islam places upon women. It is true that in some families and in some cultures women are forced to wear hijab but this is not the norm. The Quran clearly states that there is no compulsion in religion, 2-256. Women who choose to wear hijab do not make the decision lightly. In fact many women testify that they faced great animosity from their Muslim or non-Muslim families when they decided to cover. Across the globe there are numerous instances of women having to defend their right to wear the hijab. Hijab can be a symbol of piety and it can be a sign of great inner strength and fortitude. A woman wearing hijab becomes a very visible sign of Islam. While Muslim men can blend easily into any society, Muslim women are often put on the line, and forced to defend not only their decision to cover, but also their religion. Nevertheless, women who wear hijab insist that the advantages far outweigh any disadvantage conjured up by media bias or general ignorance. Verses and a hadith about hijab in Islam Question could you please provide me with some quotes from the Hadith and Quran on the importance of hijab for women? Answer. Praise be to Allah. Hijab in the Quran. Verses that have to do with hijab are as follows. Allah says, Interpretation of the Meaning. And tell the believing women to lower their gaze, from looking at forbidden things. And protect their private parts, from illegal sexual acts, and not to show off their adornment except only that which is apparent, like both eyes for necessity to see the way.
or outer palms of hands or one eye or dress like veil, gloves, head cover, apron, and to draw their veils all over GUB Hina, i.e. their bodies, faces, necks and bosoms, and not to reveal their adornment except to their husbands, or their fathers, or their husbands' fathers, or their sons, or their husbands' sons, or their brothers or their brothers' sons, or their sisters' sons, or their Muslim women, i.e. their sisters in Islam, or the female slaves whom their right hands possess, or old male servants who lack vigor, or small children who have no sense of feminine sex. And let them not stamp their feet so as to reveal what they hide of their adornment. And all of you beg Allah to forgive you all, O believers, that you may be successful. Al-Nur 2431 Allah says, Interpretation of the Meaning And as for women past childbearing who do not expect wedlock, it is no sin on them if they discard their outer clothing in such a way as not to show their adornment. But to refrain, i.e. not to discard their outer clothing, is better for them. And Allah is all hearer, all knower. Al-Nur 2460 Women past childbearing are those who no longer menstruate, so they can no longer get pregnant or bear children. We shall see below the words of Hafsa bin Sirin and the way in which she interpreted this verse. Allah says, Interpretation of the Meaning O Prophet, tell your wives and your daughters and the women of the believers to draw their cloaks, veils, all over their bodies, i.e. screen themselves completely except the eyes or one eye to see the way. That will be better, that they should be known, as free respectable women, so as not to be annoyed. And Allah is ever oft forgiving, most merciful. Allah's Ab 3359. Allah says, Interpretation of the Meaning O you who believe, enter not the Prophet's houses, unless permission is given to you for a meal, and then, not, so early as, to wait for its preparation. But when you are invited, enter, and when you have taken your meal, disperse without sitting for a talk. Verily, such, behavior, annoys the Prophet, and he is shy of, asking, you, to go, but Allah is not shy of, telling you, the truth. And when you ask, his wives, for anything you want, ask them from behind a screen, that is pure for your hearts and for their hearts. And it is not, right, for you that you should annoy Allah's messenger, nor that you should ever marry his wives after him, his death. Verily, with Allah that shall be an enormity. Allah's Ab 3353. Hadiths about Hijab With regard to the Ahadith, it was narrated from Safiya bin Shaybar that Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, used to say. When these words were revealed, and to draw their veils all over Gub Hina, i.e. their bodies, faces, necks and bosoms, they took their izas, a kind of garment, and tore them from the edges and covered their faces with them. Narrated by Al-Bukhari, 4481. The following version was narrated by Abu Dawud, 4102. May Allah have mercy on the Mohaj women. When Allah revealed the words and to draw their veils all over Gub Hina, i.e. their bodies, faces, necks and bosoms, they tore the thickest of their aprons, a kind of garment, and covered their faces with them. Sheikh Muhammad Alamin al-Shankiti, may Allah have mercy on him, said, This hadith clearly states that what the Sahabi women mentioned here understood from this verse, and to draw their veils all over Gub Hina, i.e. their bodies, faces, necks and bosoms, was that they were to cover their faces, and that they tore their garments and covered their faces with them. In obedience to the command of Allah in the verse where he said and to draw their veils all over Gub Hina, i.e. their bodies, faces, necks and bosoms, which meant covering their faces. Thus the fair-minded person will understand that a woman's observing hijab and covering her face in front of men is established in the Sahih Sunnah that explains the book of Allah. Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, praise those women for hastening to follow the command of Allah given in his book. It is known that their understanding of the words and to draw their veils all over Gub Hina, i.e. their bodies, faces, Necks and bosoms, as meaning covering the face came from the Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. Because he was there and they asked him about everything that they did not understand about their religion. And Allah says, Interpretation of the Meaning. And we have also sent down unto you, O Muhammad, the decree, reminder and the advice, i.e. the Quran, that you may explain clearly to men what is sent down to them. And that they may give thought, Al-Nal 1644. Ibn Hajjah said in Fath al-Bari, there is a report of Ibn Abi Hatim via Abd al ibn Uthman ibn Katham from Safiyah that explains that. This report says, we mentioned the women of Quraysh and their virtues in the presence of Aisha and she said, The women of Quraysh are good, but by Allah I have never seen any better than the women of the Ansar, or any who believed the book of Allah more strongly or had more faith in the revelation. When Surat al-Nur was revealed, and to draw their veils all over Gud Hina, i.e. their bodies, faces, necks and bosoms, their menfolk came to them and recited to them what had been revealed. And there was not one woman among them who did not go to her apron, and the following morning they prayed wrapped up as if there were crows on their heads. It was also narrated clearly in the report of al-Bukhari narrated above, where we see Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, who was so knowledgeable and pious.
praising them in this manner and stating that she had never seen any women who believed the Book of Allah more strongly or had more faith in the revelation. This clearly indicates that they understood from this verse, and to draw their veils all over Jiyub Hina, i.e. their bodies, faces, necks and bosoms, that it was obligatory to cover their faces and that this stemmed from their belief in the Book of Allah and their faith in the revelation. It also indicates that women observing hijab in front of men and covering their faces is an act of belief in the Book of Allah and faith in the revelation. It is very strange indeed that some of those who claim to have knowledge say that there is nothing in the Quran or Sunnah that says that women have to cover their faces in front of non-Maram men. Even though the Sahabi women did that in obedience to the command of Allah in his book, out of faith in the revelation, and that this meaning is also firmly entrenched in the Sunnah. As in the report from al-Bukhari quoted above. This is among the strongest evidence that all Muslim women are obliged to observe hijab. Adwa al-Bayan, 6594-595 Aisha narrated that the wives of the Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, used to go out at night to al-Manasi, well-known places in the direction of al-Biki, to relieve themselves. And Umay used to say to the Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, let your wives be veiled. But the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, did not do that. Then one night Saud of Zimah, the wife of the Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, went out at Aisha time and she was a tall woman. Umar called out to her, We have recognized you, O Saud, hoping that hijab would be revealed, then Allah revealed the verse of hijab. Narrated by al-Bukhari, 146, Muslim, 2170. Ibn Shihab narrated that Anas said, I am the most knowledgeable of people about hijab. Yubay ibn Kab used to ask me about it. When the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, married Zainab bin Jish, whom he married in Medina, he invited the people to a meal after the sun had risen. The Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, sat down and some men sat around him after the people had left. Until the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, stood up and walked a while, and I walked with him, until he reached the door of Aisha's apartment. Then he thought that they had left so he went back and I went back with him, and they were still sitting there. He went back again, and I went with him, until he reached the door of Aisha's apartment, then he came back and I came back with him, and they had left. Then he drew a curtain between me and him, and the verse of hijab was revealed. Al-Bukhari, 5149, Muslim, 1428. Erwer narrated that Aisha said, The Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, used to pray Fajr and the believing women would attend, the prayer, with him, wrapped in their aprons. Then they would go back to their houses and no one would recognize them. Narrated by al-Bukhari, 365, Muslim, 645. Aisha narrated, may Allah be pleased with her, said. The riders used to pass by us when we were with the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, in iron. And when they drew near to us we would lower our jilbabs from our heads over our faces, then when they had passed we would uncover them again. Narrated by Abu Dawud, 1833, Ibn Major, 2935. Classed as Sahih by Ibn Kuzayma, 4203, and by Al Albani in Kitab Jilbab Balmara al Muslimah. Asma bint Abi Bakr said, We used to cover our faces in front of men. Narrated by Ibn Kuzayma, 4203, Al Hakim, 1624. He classed it as Sahih and Al Dahabi agreed with him. It was also classed as Sahih by Al Albani in Jilbab al Mara al Muslimah. Asim al Hall said, We used to enter upon Hafsa bin Sirin who had put her jilbab thus and covered her face with it, and we would say to her, May Allah have mercy on you. Allah says, Interpretation of the meaning. And as for women past childbearing who do not expect wedlock, it is no sin on them if they discard their outer clothing in such a way as not to show their adornment. Al Nur 2460. And she would say to us, What comes after that? We would say, But to refrain, i.e., not to discard their outer clothing, is better for them. And she would say, that is confirming the idea of hijab. Narrated by Al-Bihaki, 793. And Allah knows best.